intros, gals, friends, and fiends. What's up? It's your boy Leebly and, and Jojo. Yep. Yeah. And uh, today we are counting down your the top ten raid heroes because you were talking too long. And kicking off the list at number ten, we've got Yushin. So if Lieb would be so kind as to pull up Yushin, or else I'll have to do that myself. Wait, where is Yushin? He's right there, dummy. There he is. Okay. So that is the Celestial Sage Yushin. And the only reason he's good for raid is because of his skill, Lightning Strike. And also his passive. So let's start with his passive. Okay. Alright, so we've established. Okay. Um, so his passive. Wise words. He decreases all enemies' block rate by 50%, which doesn't which doesn't affect the dragon because he's immune to debuffs and stuff. And then he also becomes immune to all damage two times for two ta for two turns, my bad. Which is two turns of invincibility, which means the raid dragon can't hurt him for two turns. And then the other reason that he's good is because of the skill lightning strike here. So it inflicts 85% magic damage on five enemies. Additionally, inflicts damage equal to 20% of the enemy's max HP and, it doesn't and affect the in raid dragon. Increases the skill cooldown by 30 seconds. So basically, the raid dragon won't be able to do anything for 30 seconds to you. And this is also really good in PvP. Puh, 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 um, because they it also. quite good enough to make our top 10 arena list. And if you haven't seen that, you should check that out. Whoa! <laughs> okay. And then his other skill will just cover it quickly. That is Dark Thunder Wolf, and it inflicts 160% magical damage on three enemies. Piercing will take effect. Nothing special, but it's just some great damage. To it's a pretty Wolf. good move. It's great in Arena, but in Raid, it's the, his main use is yeah. His yeah. one skill. Alright guys, we will be back with our number nine. Coming in at number nine, guys, we have Caron. Not Karen, Caron. Karen. And the reason, the main reason he's used is his passive. All allies become immune to stun for six turns, and the reason that that's helpful is the raid dragon himself has an AOE stun that will almost always hit. So if you do not have an immunity to stun, um, the dragon will just immobilize your whole team, and then you can't do anything. Hang on a second, guys. My name's Yui, and I'm a prodigy. <laughs> Consider yourself blessed by my melody. Uh. Okay. After that <laughs> weird little thing, we've got. And part of the reason why he's actually really good is he can serve as part support and then part the immunity to stun because he can also heal all allies HP with 80% magic attack, which is great if you've been slightly weakened by the raid, but he definitely isn't the best healer for raid. And then his other skill, I'll let Lee talk about that. So it recovers an ally's HP with 190% magic damage, which is a pretty good heal, but it's not the best heal in the game if you want to do... um. Healers for raid? I'm not really. There's yeah. one more coming later on in the list that we prefer to use than Crow. We but will anyways, be. Ba we will be back with our number eight spot. All right, guys, we are back with our number eight, eight. slot, and in coming is Baijiao. And what makes this guy special is it, his special ability is nice because it increases your lethal attack rate. Pair that with Shane and Jupy, and you've got a really nice bonus going on there. And he also protects all allies from being poisoned for six turns, which is kind of useless and yes, unless you're trying to climb chapter six and as Yeah, well. there aren't too many poisoners in the game. And then this is the reason people use him in raid is because of the Fiendish Decree. So if you don't have Aileen, which is coming up later on the list, then you should use this because he does what Aileen can do in her passive with a normal skill that lasts for three turns. Which means if you haven't been lucky enough to get an Aileen yet, you can use this skill instead to supplement for your damage boost on your team. Yeah. And then I'll let Lee talk about his other skill. So his last skill, Scent of Poison? Yes, Scent okay. of Poison. So it inflicts 200% magic damage on one enemy, poisons the enemy with 200% of magic attack for two turns at a certain rate. So it's basically another poison uh, move, so I guess that if... You, Baijiao can defend against Baijiao. Um, but the main point of using this skill yeah. on raid is to just do some decent single target damage to the dragon. Yeah, that 200% is pretty good, and the poison also. He's immune to poison, though, so. Yeah. He's um, immune yeah. to debuffs. Yeah. Which means we will move on to our number 7 slot. We will be back shortly. 
Alright guys, coming in at number 10, you guys knew that seven. he was gonna be on this number 7, Wait, I messed my seven. words up. <laughs> Wait, is it 10? No, it's no seven. we've only been making <laughs> Okay. Alright, coming in at number 7, we have the Death Lord himself. And we've got his passive, we've already kind of gone over this in Arena, but some of this also works great in Raid. The main part of this that works great at Raid is his increases damage of all allies by 50%. And then also decreases his skill cooldowns by 7 seconds with each basic attack. Which means he increases your team's damage, so he's another great damage support monster. We considered him better than Baijiao at doing that. And then he can also activate his single target over and over if you give him speed. And he can also draw, draw out the turns to keep your Shane's invincibility on longer. And so that skill is just really useful. And then I'll let Leib talk about his normal skills. Alright, so basically... Advent Grim Reaper is always going to be one of the best moves in the game, so it inflicts 100% physical damage on all enemies, silences at one or more target. This would be great in Arena, but not too great for Raid. But when um, he's great at Raid, comes in at his second skill. Yep. Alright, so Deadly Strike inflicts 110% physical damage on one enemy three times with piercing. And Th ignore defense. Yeah. This is going to be a very heavy damage dealer on the Raid Dragon, because it is um, 330% and a pierce and an ignore defense. And combined with its 50% damage increase and the cooldown reduction in its passive, he can be using this skill over and over for a ton of damage. Yeah, and uh, Delens is also super fast. I'm not, yeah. 31 speed. We'll be mm -hmm. back with the number 6 spot shortly. <laughs> you weren't. She is our number... Sorry, Seven. guys, uh, this is a failure. Okay. She's our number six hero. We had a few technical difficulties there, and a bit of leave sc screwing around. But he oh, oh, so the kid who just went to the potty. <laughs> so, anyways, so anyways, we are about to cover why Jupy is good for raid, and we're starting it off with her passive. She increases all allies' lethal attack by 50%. If you don't know what lethal attack does, it's guaranteed to hit the target the lowest health who doesn't have invincibility, and then it also does an increase in damage. So you don't need the lower health or invincibility. You don't need the hit the target with the lowest health in raid, because it's just one target. But the damage boost is always nice. And I'll let Leib talk about her skills. Alright, so we got... Snipping... No, I'm kidding. Um, so we have... Sn sn oh my god, I screwed my words up. Sniping stance. Massively increases lethal attack slash critical rate for three turns. Additionally, this skill becomes an active skill during buff duration. And what that means is it can do an additional 230% damage in 30 seconds when you click to use it again. Okay, so yeah, that is a very nice skill. Sadly, it does not say how much it increases the lethal. It's and just a critical lot. attack. I don't know it's either. just it's just a bunch. She'll be almost always lethal in with that. All right, so yeah, and if you put like good stuff on her, she can hit for like twenty thousand each time. So attacks an enemy with two hundred and thirty percent physical damage. Um, just a very nice single target. Um, if you guys watched the live streams on Friday, um, uh, the. CM of the live stream had a um a Jupy that was just doing a ton of damage against the Advent um Ace dungeon. dungeon. Yeah. So it was just super cool. So her skills are just perfect for Ray combined with an amazing passive. And that will bring us to our number five spot. Hey guys, we are here with our number five spot, which is actually two heroes, because they serve so, the same purpose. So it's a spada slash Velika. Velika. So these both have, like, mostly the same moves and that I will... And the reason you use them is because of their passive, which is the same each. Yeah. And their passive, each passive, reduces magic damage received for all allies by 50%, which means you take half damage from the raid, because the raid boss deals magic damage. And then, I think Espada's got the better skills, but Velika has better health. Alright, so attacks an enemy with 230% magic damage. So that's, for raid. that's the same as Guppy that we just saw, Jupy. Um, so yeah, it's a great attack, and attacks an enemy with 180% magic damage and kills the target at a rate, um, after two turns. And since the raid boss is immune to, dam to death, it'll do an additional 100% attack damage. So yeah, that's very good, and then we'll go over Velika's skills really quickly. So, um, Flame of Darkness, uh, so Velika's basically one of the main AoEs. 
in the game that Except people use. Except AoE doesn't matter in Raid, but people still use her because of her passive and her defense. Yes. Yeah. So, um, attacks and attacks all enemies with 80% magic damage. That's not really going to be too helpful in Raid. But it does ignore defense, too. Yeah. Um, so then this one attacks all enemies with 80% magic damage, burns one or more targets with 50% magic damage, so that's basically just gonna do the same thing, because the raid boss is immune to all debuffs. Which so will bring us on to our number four spot. Alright guys, coming in at number four, we have the legendary muse, Lena. And she was the better healer we were talking about. When we were talking about Corone, we said there was a better healer, this is her. So... So, it decreases all enemies' physical attack and defense by 25%. Unfortunately, this passive does not affect the raid boss because he is immune to debuffs. But in arena or PvE, that is a helpful passive. But her skills is what makes her amazing at raid. So, Warm Echo increases all damage by 50% for two turns. And what's even better about this is it stacks with Aileen and Delwyn's passive, so you can have over double damage for two turns. So, yeah, that's super good. So, if you were to bring in an Aileen or a Delwyn's, Aileen and Delwyn's um, passive do not stack together. Um, but if you were to bring in one of those two, you could have, um, you could have plus 110% damage. Which is super good against a raid boss if you were to bring in a good damage dealer along with like that. A shame. So then marching anthem, it will heal all allies by with sixty percent magic damage and it lasts for two turns. Which means each turn it does another sixty percent heal, which is really helpful when one during the later stages when the raid deals more damage, because that way each turn you can get a nice steady influx of health. And it only has a one hundred second cooldown, which means it can be used relatively quickly again. We will be back with our number three spot. All right, guys, coming in at number three, we have Fodina's Empress Aileen. And you guys all knew that she was going to be on this list at some point. And We've mentioned her is. enough throughout the video. Yeah. Anyway, so her passive, it, this is just amazing for Raid because it increases all allies' physical attack by 60%. And if you noticed, Yushin was the only magical attacker on this list. So Raid definitely favors towards the physical attackers. And then she also revives once with full health, which means if the raid kills her once, she's just back again. And now I'll let Lee talk about her skills. So she was actually my first, um, seven night, just a little random note, I guess. Mine was um, So, yeah. Inflicts 70% ma physical damage on all enemies two times, electrifies the enemy for one- for- oh, oh god, I screwed it up. For two turns at a certain rate. And so it's also guaranteed critical. Just- Sticking that in there. So yeah, basically the electrify, if you guys don't know what it will uh, do, basically it will- Almost guaranteed critical. It's the other skill that's guaranteed yeah. critical. Basically it will prevent your enemies from attacking for the two turns. Except in raid, that doesn't matter, so it's just a nice damage skill. Yeah, so then, um, so then that's 140% um, damage on the raid, raid, boss, raid boss, which is not too bad, but it's not the best, um, hitter, but anyways. And then her best attack skill is right here. So Inflicts 120% physical damage on one enemy twice. And additionally, piercing and critical hit will take effect. And electrification. Yeah, so that is super good. So they won't be able to attack again. If they it will the be boss. It will be critical hit. Yeah, if Which they're not the raid boss. critical hit doesn't make it do 60% more damage. So that way, the skill will just, combined with her passive, just deal so much damage. And it's just a 120 pierce, so it's very nice. You mean 240? To inflict 120 uh, twice. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so it's just a 240 pierce, which is super nice. And uh, we will be back with, with our number two spot. Alright guys, coming in at number two, we have Sieg. And this is pretty obvious why he can draw turns on really long and is probably the second best attacker on raid. So, his passive effect, I got your back. All allies become immune to stun for six turns, which this is super good. Because the raid boss actually has an AoE stun, so... Same reason as Corone, why that passive Yeah, really so you awesome. won't be stunnable, which is super good. And then I'll let JoJo talk about unsealed here. So it attacks an enemy with 600% physical attack. What more do you need? Combined with Lena and Aileen's damage buff, this skill will be... Con even at level 30, this skill will be hitting over 10,000 damage to the raid boss. If only it had a pierce to and ignore defense, that would be ju just be super good. Sieg would be used in arena then. So then Wreck-It attacks an enemy with 230% physical damage. This is... It kind of gets very overshadowed by his overmove. 
oh, over move. Okay. By his other move. But the reason this move is here is because it's got, like, close to half of, it's got less than half of the cooldown of the. Yeah, so that one has 150 seconds and this one has 74 so seconds. So the whole point of Sieg is to protect your team from being stomped and then inflict massive amounts of damage back at the attacker. Yeah, so we will be back with our number one pick on this list. Alright guys, we are here with number one, Demon Sealer Shane. So basically her passive, it's not really too much. Well, yes it of... is. Her passive is why she's good at raid. A lot and, of it. And her skill is. Yeah, but, but, so massively right, anyway. increases critical hit rate, which means she'll be almost always critting against the raid boss, which is the 60% damage increase. And so, as you can see, she's only got 900. Oh, yeah, I forgot health, about the. Which means the she dies pretty. She'd be one shot by raid, most likely. And then, additionally, she becomes immune to all magic damage for three turns, which means for three turns, she won't be able to be damaged while dishing out massive pain from her skill, as I'll let. I almost called you Sieg, as I'll let Weebly talk about. Alright, so attacks an enemy with 250% physical damage, and this is, like, not even normal damage. It's just, like, she just hits them so many times with consecutive, like, 1,000 damage, which is and it's, just amazing. And it's only got a 36 second cooldown. Which yeah. Which means it'll be almost instantly reusable again. Yeah, so Shane is very good for that reason. She's the ultimate damage dealer in Raid. Pair that with Lena and Aileen and Sieg and Velika. You won't die. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to do a flip onto that like button and for like more the subscribe button. for more daily content. If you did not enjoy this video, then leave a comment suggesting what we should do next, and we just might do it. Hope you enjoyed. Good.